This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. In this video today, we're going to do a little bit of mail time. I'm going to look at some viewer submissions that were sent in. But before we get started on that, I want to talk for just a second about mail time. So the first mail time video actually started all the way back in 2015. One day I went to the P.O. Box and I had this large package in there that came to me from a gentleman named David Brookover. David is a wonderful landscape photographer, very accomplished, lives in Jackson Hole, has his own gallery. Uh, and that was the first package that I got sent in and I, I was just blown away that he watched my videos. And so I contacted him and said, do you mind if I share this with others on the show? And he said, absolutely, let's, let's do it. And I said, fine. We became friends since. I featured him in an artist series video a long time ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that up here. It's one of my favorites. Anyway, David has become a very good friend. And since then, other people have just started sending mail in and the whole thing just started snowballing. And the next couple of years, I started regularly featuring viewer work on the show. So the interesting thing is over the years, I've just gotten into a rhythm of doing these videos and it's only been more recently that we started cataloging the work here. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of zines, a lot of books, a lot of prints that people have sent in. And I've started doing a count on that. And the last count on this was 237 zines, prints, or books that people have sent in. And there's no doubt in my mind that we're gonna pass 300 this year. That is a lot of stuff. There is a considerable library growing here at the studio. And this last year, I've actually moved to starting to critique work, which the reason for that is I wanted to make it a little more interesting than just showing the work. Yeah, there's points of discussion to talk about. The work is generally really good and I want people to learn from this stuff. And so that was an attempt to kind of take this to a different level. And that's where it brings me to what I want to mention today. So I've been putting a lot of thought into this and I'm kind of thinking at this point, and I'm not sure what I want to do just yet, but I want this to evolve to the next thing. I don't want to just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And it's very possible that we might stop doing mail time in its current form. In other words, I love that people send stuff in, but this may be the last year that we do that. And that main reason is it's just growing into this massive library that I store. I don't want to get rid of anything. I think I'm very flattered that people thought enough of me to send something in for me to share with others. And so I just want this to grow into something else. And you guys stay tuned on this because I'm going to... I'll be very open about what we're going to do as we move through the rest of this year into next year, and I want it to evolve into something else. And it may be stuff where we still have submissions open, but I just think it needs to take on a different form than where we are today. Another thing that you can do is you can actually sign up for the email newsletter that I send out. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't really want more email tech. Well, just sign up. It's not a big deal. And if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. I don't spam the list. I don't do uh, any sales through the list. We don't do camera reviews. It's just talking about photography. I send an email out every Friday. It is photography related content. It's in there. Sometimes we have looked at mail in there. I've featured people in there as well. And so if you haven't checked that out, I will put a link below. And I probably I promise I will not be mad if you actually don't subscribe, but just 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 do it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to some mail today. Okay, so first up is this book that comes to us from Matthew Rigg. This is called Sanctuary, and it comes with a note which Matthew wrote, which reads, Dear Ted, my name is Matthew Rigg. I'm a 22-year-old photographer from Seattle, Washington. I first started taking photography seriously back in 2017 thanks to your YouTube channel. Because of your videos on medium format, I picked up film photography, and I'm sending you my recently released photo book, Sanctuary. It's a story of me coming into terms with the end of my childhood and saying goodbye to a place that I've had a hard time calling home. Without you and your passion for sharing your love and knowledge of photography, I wouldn't be here sending this book, nor would I be half the artist that I am today. Keep up the great work and thank you for all you do, Matthew. One of the things that I really like about this is when you look at the use of light that Matthew's using on this, is the earlier images in the book, I mean, we kind of have this whole idea of the day going by. These are images that are have much more blue in the sky, they're much more bright lit and as you move through we get into these images of dusk and then eventually the last image is actually a night image where the only light is coming from the uh, lights on the building itself. Another thing that I really love is that Matthew did not over design this at all. Everything is very simply produced. It's simply presented. The typography is fine. Uh, it's very minimal actually. You don't see a lot of typography unless it's needed other than the page numbers and so this is really well done. And so Matthew, excellent job on this. One other thing that I want to share with you is from the preface that Matthew writes in here, he says, at the risk of coming off trite, I would just like to say that I hope these pictures make you feel at home. If you're anything like me, visiting your hometown may cause you to feel some combination of anxiety, dread, or any other feeling deemed unpleasant. This project is for both you and I alike. I did my best to strip these photographs of any and all context, allowing you to insert yourself into them as you please. 
Personally speaking, I hope that one day this is how I will look back at this place. If proven unsuccessful, I hope that we may at least return to this collection of photographs our sanctuary. And I'll also note that all of the books and everybody who sent something in here, I will put links to these in the show description. So please go support your colleagues and your fellow photographers. And uh, if you see something you like, generally, I can't remember whether this book was for sale or not, but I'll put that information in the show description below this video. Okay, next up is this little book that comes to us from John Leach. There's no title of this book. It's just a small collection of black and white images that were taken in Seattle. This was done through Blurb, and uh, John did write a handwritten note in the front that says, Ted Forbes, John Leach, Flickr.com. So I think everything on Flickr might be his. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll look him up and put his thing in the show description. Flickr, you might have heard of him. Feeling raw today, folks. Anyway, this is a really nicely done little book. I love the fact that it's short and sweet and to the point. I like John's images a lot. There's a lot of interesting things that he's doing in here, just photographing humans. The cover is great. I love the high contrast black and white look. There's a couple images in here that I think are particularly strong. This guy on the park bench, and there's a woman subframed between the two benches. The girl with the bubbles is absolutely wonderful. And this extremely tall, slim guy with the shopping bag and the bow tie, I absolutely love. So the work in here is absolutely outstanding. The only criticism that I have, and I like the fact that it's just presented as a series of photographs. There's no tie. Uh, there's no text inside. It's just the work presented as itself. The only thing that kind of destroys that for me, and I say this with a lot of stuff that's sent in just because it's popular to do, all these images were taken roughly in Seattle, and then I opened to a page that's Portland, Oregon, but it's the same idea that goes through. It's, it's specific Northwest street images. I don't think you need to identify everything with text. It doesn't do anything but distract a little bit from the image, and I don't think that any of these are so location dependent as that they need to be defined. That is my two cents. Otherwise, absolutely gorgeous little book, John. Thank you for sharing. All right, so I've got a couple more things I wanna share with you. I've got a wonderful collection of street photography here, as well as this book called An American Cloud, which is a really interesting project done with cheap digicams. So I wanna to get to these, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our awesome sponsor, who are indeed the folks over at Squarespace. Com. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? Squarespace has you covered. It's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started. You can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit, and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid, you can make them float on top of one another, you can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're gonna need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers, they even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP, sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. 
All right, so next up is this really beautiful little book called An American Cloud. This comes to us from Kai O'Connell, and Kai includes a note which reads, Hello, Ted. My name is Kai O'Connell. I'm a 22-year-old photographer from Berkeley, California. Included in this package is my debut photography project titled An American Cloud, and it's all about growing up under the atmosphere of America in the early 2020s. I shot the entire project on cheap digicams, such as an Olympic C5060, C7070, and an E3. I shot the entire project on cheap digicams, an Olympus C5060, a C7070, and an E300 as a way of advocating for the value of older camera technology to provide a modern aesthetic to capture a modern moment. I am trying to find ways to show the world my work and simultaneously inspire people of all ages to begin their own projects with the gear they can afford. Thank you so much for your time and for all the inspiration you have provided me throughout the years. All the best, Kai. So a couple things that I want to say about this book that I really like. So first of all, I think Kai has a ridiculously good eye for somebody his age. Uh, I think that he's showing a real maturity in terms of direction. I think that he's able and very capable to shoot in many different styles. And I think that's one of the things that really draws me to this work. Use of color is very interesting. The use of the lo-fi look to the digicams I think is really cool. And then he's got kind of this style where he gets into black and white street photography. And it becomes more of a fertile journalistic essay sort of style that starts to tell you things. The landscapes are really good in here. I think that... Kai, if I were to give you any advice on this, I think that in terms of direction, you could easily pick one of these and just go with it from that regard. I think that there's so much information in here. That, now, that's not a bad thing, but I think that sometimes, I think, well, let me give you an example. I think some of your strongest work in here is when we get into people. So for example, the spread of two images that were taken in a bedroom with people in them, they start to tell me a story and I kind of am drawn in and I want to know more about what's going on. And I think that that narrative kind of is broken when you go to the next page and you go into the forest landscapes. And that's something that I would try to do is, is like when you're coming up with an idea of a visual statement that you want to say is to go ahead and work with that and expand on it some more. That happens several times in, 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 this, in this little book and I think it's really interesting. There's another uh, image of these people sitting at a table over dinner and it's you know juxtaposed with this black and white images of the leaves and I'm not real sure what the connection is there. It's kind of interesting. And if there is a connection there, I think there's ways to kind of carry that through thematically and further spreads. And that's what would make it more of a statement and less of a collection of images. But I think you're on the right track to doing some really cool things. This spread has a really interesting dialogue too. You've got the guy sitting in the living room with the chair, and then you've got the people over here in the gym. And what's the juxtaposition here? What, what is the statement that's being made? I think there is a strong statement that's coming out of this, and I would like to see that expanded on more. Get it also here with the blurry image of the house and then the blurry image of the woman in the bed. But you know, Kai, this is a very well done book and you should be very proud of this. My favorite thing about this book is that it is shot on cheap digital cameras. And I know that was the intention behind this and you said that in the letter is that you wanted to inspire others to shoot on what they've got. And this is something that's very close to me because I think it's one of the biggest myths in any creative um, avenue, not just photography, it could be in anything. But there's always this myth with the artist that you think, well, I can't make something because I need these tools to go do it. And that really is, it couldn't be further from the truth. And I love the fact that you've proven it here with this book is that you're able to get good stuff with whatever you've got. And believe me, I live in a world where, you know, I have a YouTube channel here and I cover camera reviews and announcements when they come out. And it seems like they're very frequent. And the thing that makes me slightly uncomfortable about that usually, and I've said this many times over the years on this channel, is that it does kind of create this lie that, okay, well, you have to have this latest and greatest piece of equipment to be able to shoot on, and that really couldn't be further from the truth. You can make stuff with anything you have, and you should be making stuff with things that you already have. Uh, you know, new gear is always fun, but uh, but I love the fact that something is done with, with things that were intentionally out of date. So anyway, Kai, excellent work. Thanks for sending. All right, next up is this wonderful book called Sonder. This comes to us from Jeff Larson. Jeff also sent this lovely card which reads, Dear Ted, I am very excited that you have started critiques. Feedback and review are so important for the artistic process. I feel so strongly about that that I've actually started a YouTube channel dedicated to critique called The Crit House. In the spirit of critique, I've enclosed my book, Sonder. Please let me know your thoughts. And please check out The Crit House. We'd love to have you on. Jeff. All right, so Jeff, this is really nicely done. It's very well designed. It's very well laid out. The typography is, is nice in here. It doesn't get in the way. Um, one thing that I think you have a really good command of is geometry, um, a sense of how images relate to each other in the spreads. There's a really good progression. I love the way, like this one, you have the arrow, you have the man pointing who's in the shadows. 
Um, I really like a lot of the work in this book and I think it's really well done. And I think obviously Boston is a big part of who you are and you're growing up. And I think that it was a, a watershed moment where you started looking at things differently. And the hard thing for me is that I know that you run a critique channel and you definitely want me to critique your work. And so uh, it's really well done. And so it's really hard from that standpoint to say, I think the only thing for me, and then if you wanted a different direction of something, you wanted to question yourself as an artist, I think clearly you have the language down, you have the syntax down, what do you do with this? Because to me, uh, it's a wonderful book of street photography, but I've seen a lot of wonderful books of street photography. It's a very difficult, difficult genre in the terms of how do you take it into another direction. I think one thing that would be interesting to try to break this rhythm up a little bit for you would be uh, to try a different city. I think that I get a sense in here that you're very familiar with Boston. You even talk about it in here that that was a watershed moment in moving to Boston and it's a big part of who you are and the way that you see things and the way that you photograph. And so I think it would be interesting to take a lot of your vocabulary and apply it to a place that's much less familiar. Uh, maybe you did a smaller town, maybe you did something back in the Midwest, maybe you did another major city, maybe you did something in Europe. And so things like that are things that start to produce challenges for us. And I think the other thing too is just breaking the familiarity of what it is that you shoot and how you shoot it. I think it's pretty obvious when you're dealing with street photography that there's kinds of people that you shoot and there's kinds of light that you're used to working with. Try going out at different times a day or shooting something that's in the evening or even at night. Uh, that provides a different perspective and a new canvas for you to put your own vocabulary over. But this is a very nice collection of street photography. You should be very proud of it. And as with all the people that have shown stuff in this video or sent stuff in for me to show, I will put links to everybody's work in the show description just as a reminder. So um, there you go. And I would love to hear what you guys think. If you have any questions, so drop them in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.